Thanks. Thanks very much. Thanks. Yeah, my parents were at the early show and um, they left without saying goodbye. So, uh, <laughs> whatever. Do you guys uh, do you guys text and drive? Yeah, nice, nice. I uh, I don't, but I have a smartphone, so you know I will Instagram and drive, and uh, I buy things on Amazon and drive. <laughs> And then when little trivia pops to my head, uh, I Google it and drive. And I just kind of feel like someday they're gonna be scraping my body off the sidewalk. And they're gonna be like, wow, this is bad. Luckily only the driver was killed. And they find my phone, they're like, oh, here's his phone. I wonder what couldn't wait till he got home. And they unlock the phone and they're like, net worth little Bow Wow. <laughs> oh. Weird, you would think this could wait until he got home. How old is Larry Bird? Huh? <laughs> now you have no head, so. Hope it was worth it. What do you guys do for a living? We got teachers in here? Anybody a teacher? Yeah, nice. Do you have kids of your own? No. Yeah. That's probably the way it's supposed to be, right? <laughs> Only because my mom was a teacher when I was younger, and uh, I'm a big mama's boy, so that bugged me. You know, knowing she was going to work every day, doing stuff with other kids. <laughs> that she should have been doing with me, you know? <laughs> Every day she leaves the house, I'm like, where you going to teach other kids to read, you fucking whore? <laughs> She's like, I have to make a living. I'm like, you like it. <laughs> I, bet. I bet you like it make me sick <laughs> but yeah love my mom I uh <laughs> I used to shower with her when I was very young and uh yeah some people some people think that's weird um unless I'm in a room full of Italians then like <laughs> they get it you know they're like yeah me too baby <laughs> Oh, Maron. Oh. Nothing sweeter than my mother's soapy ass. <laughs> Mwah, you know, that's how they, that's how they react. Um, but I was very young when I showered with my mom. I was probably like five. And then when I was six, she was like, listen, I think you're too old to shower with me. She was like, you can shower with your dad, but not with me anymore. And I just remember that making me sad because I never saw her tits again after that. You know? Like, I, like I, I almost forget what they look like. And, uh... Kinda wish we could've had a little farewell shower together or something one last time because, um, you know, all I, all I got to do after that was look at my father's dick for the next uh, 27 years or so. Yeah. And uh, we're Italian, so my dad has a beautiful dick, but it's no my mother's tits. Right, fellas? Thank you. My father hates that joke, and, uh, but... I don't know why, I complimented his wife's tits and uh, his penis, so... Nothing's ever good enough for some people. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow, thanks. Yeah, but you really do need to see your father's penis as an adult, right? <laughs> I think every young man needs to beat his dad at basketball and see his cock at some point because you only, you only see it when you're a child and the world is very small and you don't... Like, if I had to describe my father's penis to, like, a police sketch artist or somebody, you know... <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, it's a Sprite can, flaccid, probably. <laughs> 
That's why I think I really need to just go into the woods with my dad and uh, just have two of my goons come out from behind the trees and <laughs> hold him down and pull his pants and underwear down and just flick his little dingling and <laughs> be like, I knew it, you know? I knew it. I knew you ain't shit. <laughs> you know? And then we just go to Cheesecake Factory and no, my dad, we never talk about that again for the rest of <laughs> both our lives. Um, where was I? Teachers. My, uh... <laughs> my wife is a teacher. She's a speech therapist from Staten Island, New York. And uh, yeah, but that's very funny to me because Whenever she talks, I'm like, how do they let you work with children? <laughs> with that voice. <laughs> I don't think you're helping these kids, you know? <laughs> She's like, Timmy, repeat after me. <laughs> repeat after me, my father will fucking kill you. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna go to the mall and walk my dog. <laughs> Come on, dog. Dog, T-D-A. T-D-A-W-G, dog. <laughs> but yeah, I like, uh, I like having a wife though, you know? It feels, it feels good to say my wife. It feels very grown up. And uh, I've also noticed that when you watch the news, um, guys who kill their wives get a little more forgiveness <laughs> than a guy who just kills his girlfriend, right? <laughs> Whenever a guy kills his girlfriend, the news is like, look at this beautiful angel whose life was tragically cut short. Then a guy kills his wife, you're like, there's two sides to every story. <laughs> right? We don't know what was happening there. What she was saying to him. One thing I know about wives is uh, wives really hate it when you refer to your mother's house as home. They don't like that. <laughs> A while back, I said to my wife, I was like, I think I'm gonna go home to Jersey this weekend. And she was like, I'm pregnant with your child, actually. <laughs> but I was just like, no, home, like the place where I'm respected and loved. And there's food. <laughs> <laughs> There's food in the house, and I get foot rubs, things like that. You know? I got a good, I got a good wife. She does drink uh, a little bit, and uh, yeah, she would get really drunk, and I would have to pick her up sometimes. And uh, I saw this ad recently for an app, and the, and the app was like, they were like, "Don't drive drunk. We'll send two drivers to come get you and get you home in your own car." And I don't know about you guys, but if my wife called me and she was like, honey, I'm a little drunk, but uh, two guys are coming to get me. <laughs> I would be like, drive home. You have to, <laughs> you have to get in that car or something really bad's gonna happen. <laughs> my wife will also, uh, sometimes she'll do something kind of annoying and then she'll use sex to make me not annoyed. And uh, that's okay, I, I, I like sex and everything, but. <laughs> But it makes me think, it must, it must rule to be like a gay guy who's married to a woman. Because then, then your wife doesn't get away with any bullshit. You know? She takes her tits out and you're like, ah, the car's still totaled, sweetie. What are we gonna do about this? <laughs> Did you spend $250 on Amazon? Put that dirty pussy away. We gotta <laughs> figure this out. <laughs> no, but it's very, it's very good being married. And then, uh, but before you get married, you gotta get engaged, you know? And uh, getting engaged is tough because there's a lot of pressure to do something really special. And uh, when I proposed, I didn't know what to do. And I watched some YouTube videos of guys proposing. And there was one video that I watched. There's a guy, he's on top of a building with his girlfriend. He pretends to fall off the building. <laughs> and then she looks down and he's lying on a pad with a sign that says, Jennifer, will you marry me? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's a little fucked up to do to, to, do to somebody. 
that you love. But the video had like eight million views. So I was like, should I do something like this? Like maybe what I'll do is I'll take her to the 9-11 memorial. And then when she's looking at all the victims, she sees my name carved in the wall. Yeah, then, then she turns around and I'm gone, you know? And she goes, oh my God, was my boyfriend killed in 9-11? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Has a ghost been eating my pussy twice a month for the past four and a half years? Her whole family's in on it. They're like, who's Mike? We've never heard of him before. I don't know what you're talking about. Then she goes home and there's nothing in the house before 2001. <laughs> it's just like a PlayStation 2 and a Big Mouth Billy Bass on the wall. <laughs> but then taped to the Billy Bass, there's a note and it, it's, it says, honey, I wasn't killed in 9-11 <laughs> and I want to be your tower one forever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've Osama been loving you for a long time. Uh, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Something, something like that. Thank you. I'm glad that joke hit because you can't do a 9/11 joke anywhere in New York City. You know, if I do that joke in Staten Island, somebody will be like. Hey, fuck you, my father was a fire truck. <laughs> so, so, you gotta be, you gotta be selective, you know, you gotta, you gotta do it here, or like Philadelphia's a good place for that joke. Cause they'll be like, yeah, fuck them towers, yo. Honestly. <laughs> that's, that's what, that's what y'all get for, for being gay and making them making them towers so big. <laughs> Thank you. But these are jokes. I eat my wife's pussy twice a week. <laughs> and, um, hey, thanks. Hey, thanks. All right. Wow. I love this crowd. <laughs> no, yeah. She, she comes about twice a week. I think those are pretty good numbers, right? Uh, especially because I used to be with a woman who came um, zero times a week because uh, I don't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> not, not my problem anymore, right fellas? <laughs> yeah, I tried, to, I tried to fix it. I went to Barnes and Noble and um, I bought this book. There's a book called She Comes First and uh, She Comes First, it's a manual on how to eat pussy. And uh, I bought it. This was pre-Amazon, so. I had to walk up to an 89-year-old woman who was working there. Uh, yeah, I said, hi, do you have She Comes First? It's a manual on how to eat pussy. And uh, I, I don't always feel like that's the most masculine thing to do, I guess. You know, read. Um, and so I start reading this book, and the guy who wrote it is a weirdo. The opening line of the book, he goes, uh, he goes, cunnilingus should be every man's native tongue. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what are we doing here? <laughs> a book about eating pussy should be written by a construction worker, honestly. <laughs> and, uh, that book should be four pages long. Right, page one. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> page two, neck pain is weakness, leaving the body. <laughs> page three, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I think oral sex, no matter who you are, you have to treat it like it's a shift at Applebee's. You're like, it's not fair that I have to be here for so long. <laughs> and uh, if I wear headphones, I get yelled at for some reason. <laughs> Even though 
Uh, getting my work done. I don't know what the, what the problem is. Trying to catch up on the murder podcast. You know? But yeah, it's very good being married. We got a little dog together too. We got dog people in the room. We have a dog and uh, he's not a rescue. Thank you. Um, yeah, we bought him from the puppy store, which is, yeah, thank you. But that's, that's bad, did you know that? You should never, you, you should never do that. You should never go to a puppy store and meet like an innocent puppy who never hurt anybody. And, and give him a home. That's really bad. Um, you know, what you're supposed to do is get an older dog who bit a seven-year-old. That's, that's what good people do. And I think it's funny because we don't do that with kids, you know? We're never like, no, don't adopt the baby. Get the 12-year-old who burns things. We, uh, we used to live in kind of this uppity neighborhood in Brooklyn, and people would put signs up, and instead of the signs saying, like, don't let your dog pee and poop here, the signs would say, please be respectful. But uh, I was like, yeah, my dog's just trying to go to the bathroom. He's not trying to disrespect you. <laughs> He's not walking by like, hey, your wife's got beautiful feet, Jerry. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. Jerry, how old's that daughter of yours, huh? She turned 18 yet? <laughs> I think my favorite animal that's not a dog or a cat is uh, a stingray. I'm a big fan of stingrays. Stingrays are really cool. They're like, they're kind of sluts a little bit. They swim right up to you and they go, they go, you can touch me, I won't tell anybody. You can just pet them. Stingrays are so cool. I'm like, Steve Irwin did something to these beautiful <laughs> creatures. What did he do? That freak was touching them in some kind of weird way. Probably down in the ocean, like, let me see that stingray penis of yours. <laughs> and the stingray was like, no, Steven. He was like, come on, I want to touch your penis. And then, bzzz, and now he's dead. So just here to say that I'm a uh, team stingray. And uh, fuck Steve Irwin. Um, yeah, I hope you went directly to hell. And hope his uh, big titted daughter follows him there. Thank you. How we doing? Uh, how we doing financially in uh, Joe Brandon's America? Okay. Uh, I'm having a tough time. I've been shoplifting a lot, to be honest with you. Just, yeah, a good amount. Thank, thank you. All right. Yeah. But I gotta tell you, don't, don't get caught. I almost got caught shoplifting at the self-checkout the other day. And it's very humiliating when you're a 35-year-old man. And, uh, I, and I think the worst part about it is like when you get caught, you have to act almost extra effeminate so they don't call the police on you. Like, the lady came over, she was like, sir, there's four items in your bag and there's three items on the screen. And I was like, oh, oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry. My wife's boyfriend made me do it. I'm sorry. Please, I'm just a cock. I don't have any. My wife's in the parking lot doing bang busts right now. And I just, they make me steal fruit and they shove it up my ass. She's like, she's like all right, get out of here. Jesus Christ. You guys feel like spam calls are evolving? Yeah, yes. Spam calls, they're getting like, a spam call, it used to be just a random number, you know? Uh, and then ne recently it was, it's like your own area code. But I got one the other day, it was a first and last name. It said like Vanessa Gomez. I was like, does a Latina woman with a huge ass want to talk to me right now? Like, what's, what's happening? I'm with my family, we're like, happy birthday, dear. <laughs> You know, I gotta take this, actually. This could be uh... <laughs> Yeah. This could be important. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'm getting a little older, and, uh, and that's okay. Because I don't, I don't fall for stuff anymore. Like, I don't... Uh, I, had that, I had one of those, uh, one of those Ridge wallets, you know? <laughs> 
you guys know what those are? They're, they're these little metal wallets, and the way they market them is they go, they go, your wallet's too big, you fucking jerk off. <laughs> Get this little metal one. But um, I don't know, I'm like a grown man. I like my big wallet, because I have things I need to carry in here, right? Like I have seven credit cards. Uh, I have $400 cash on me at all times. <laughs> I have a Costco membership. I have a, a, a picture of my daughter who went missing 10 years ago. I got, I got a, a hand-drawn map of the woods where she was last seen. I have a letter from my first wife that says, uh, uh, the hunt for Jessica has turned you into a monster. I don't know. I don't know who you are anymore. I got a CVS extra care card. So, you know, I need, I need the big wallet. What's going on in the news? The Taliban is back. They're back. And uh, did any of you see the Taliban come back and were you like, hey, good, good for you boys. <laughs> you guys really hung in there and you clearly wanted it more. And, uh, you know, nobody was using those treadmills, it seems like. The, t the Taliban is, is very bad. Um, but sometimes I feel like we need a little Taliban in this country. <laughs> Just, just some Taliban. Because I was reading another article this week. This woman, I think in Minnesota, she got 25 years in prison because she tried to run over these two kids because of their race. And I was like, well, that wasn't a very good decision, you know? And then I was like, yeah, and if we had the Taliban here, that woman would not have been driving. <laughs> so, just a little. Just a little. Just a tiny bit of Taliban. But, uh, no, just kidding. I, uh, I, feel, I feel very bad for, you know, history hasn't been very nice to women. Do you guys remember a few years ago, there was an all-female uh, spacewalk? This team of, this all-female team of astronauts went to space. And uh, I was on Twitter that day, and a bunch of these older women were sharing letters that they got from NASA. All these older women were like, you know, when I was a little girl, I wrote a letter to NASA. I said that I wanted to be an astronaut, and NASA wrote me back saying they didn't accept girls in the space program. And I was like, well, that's pretty sad. But uh, it's also funny that that was someone at NASA's job to, <laughs> to write this. A guy, a guy at NASA had to write letters to little girls and say, you'll never be an astronaut. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if that was his only job. His boss would be like, hey, Carl, how we doing on those uh, letters to little girls? <laughs> and he's like, yup, coming right up, chief. Ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> Ch -ch -ch. Dear Lucy, Ch -ch -ch. Uh, yeah, we don't make spaceships for women, unfortunately. Uh, we're not sure if your menstruation attracts space bears. <laughs> and we don't want to risk it, so... Here's my advice. Why don't you, why don't you find a man and settle down? And, uh, <laughs> I've included a recipe for tuna casserole, okay? <laughs> love, love Carl. From NASA. But yeah, I love, I love history. I'm a big history guy. I read the other day, do you guys know when they stopped doing child labor in this country? 1938, no more child labor. Um, and then, uh, do you know when they started making age of consent laws? The 1880s. So isn't that funny? There was a time in this country where you could be a kid working in a factory, but you couldn't get your dick sucked at the end of the day. <laughs> Yeah. Just seems so unfair to me. You're a nine-year-old doing a double shift in a coal mine. Can't even take your hard-earned money and go have sex with a prostitute at the end of the day. You gotta give it all to your one-legged father. I just feel like if I'm, if I'm a girl, you know, painting watches, getting radiation poisoning, Somebody's eating my pussy. Okay? 
Thank you. Uh, but yeah, history's great, you know? <laughs> I like it. I like thinking about, uh, well, because we used to have uh, slavery, and uh, uh, we, we, used to, we used to have Irish slaves. Did you guys know that? Irish people don't shut the fuck up about how they... How they, were, they are so annoying. Irish people love telling you they were slaves. They love going like, oh, we, we were slaves too. And I'm like, yeah, but you guys were slaves because you deserved it. And, uh, you know. A potato almost killed all of you, so. I think we, we let you come here and be slaves. Um, now, there's another group of white people that want to tell you they were slaves. It's, uh, it's Jews. And, um... <laughs> That, that one I feel bad about. Because imagine, imagine having a slave and it's a fucking Jew. Yeah? You try to get him to work. You're like, hey, can you go dig that hole? And he's like, yes, but I really shouldn't be in the sun for too long. My skin burns. And you're like, Alan, shut the fuck up. You do this every day. Every day your stomach hurts. <laughs> taking, taking eight soup breaks a day. God, this slave sucks. I think I'm gonna return him to the slave store. And he's like, I kept the receipt. Because I feel like American slaves built America. Like, Jewish slaves, all they built was the pyramids, and they still needed aliens to help them. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, the director was signaling. Are we okay? What do you need? Oh, okay. I thought I got... I was doing that. Right in the middle of that Jewish slave bit. That, that smashed. Shit. We were doing, oh, okay. Oh. Mm. All right. Keep it polite, everybody, all right? Don't, no comments about her body. Damn. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into it. Uh, you guys think fucking a corpse should be a crime? I don't, I don't know if I do. My father-in-law is getting very old, and uh, you know, if somebody called me and they were like, hey, th this is the morgue, are you sitting down? Someone took your father-in-law's corpse and they fucked it. I would be like, why did you tell me that? You could have just not called me and said anything. And, and don't you feel like if you were working at a morgue and somebody was doing that, you'd just be like, hey, get out of here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, scram, you know? Get, you know. <laughs> Do this two more times, I'm gonna tell your parents. <laughs> speaking of uh, sex, you know? <laughs> speaking of. Speaking of, um, somebody, uh, somebody asked me a couple days ago, they were, they were like, hey, Mike, if you were gonna have sex with a man, uh, is there a man you would pick? And I thought about it a little bit. I was, I was like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not gay. I don't think it would make a difference. But then I thought about it a little more. And uh, there is this guy that works at my coffee shop. <laughs> and he's got long hair and kind of a slim build, you know? So, so he, he looks like a woman from the back, right? Um, and then also, you never know if his hair is gonna be down or in a ponytail. So. They're always like kind of surprised when you walk in because. Uh, sort of sort of looks good either way. And, uh, yeah, 
Yeah, he's got, he's got pretty soft lips. And <laughs> nice smile. And I walked in a couple days ago. I had exact change, which never really happened. So, uh, so I gave him the 325, and then I and then I kind of instinctively waited for my change. And he was like, "Oh, that's it." And, and I was like, oh, "Oh, sorry, it's uh, it's too early to do math." Ha. Uh, yeah. We just sort of giggled together, the two of us, for a little bit. So. You know, probably, probably that guy. No, it's, uh, I guess him. I'm not gonna take him to Applebee's, but you know, if if I was in prison and he showed up, I'd be like, that's mine. Everybody, stay away from him, or I'll shank you. But yeah, I do appreciate you guys coming out, you know, supporting uh, supporting live comedy. Uh, thank you, give yourselves a hand. Yeah. Because, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but c comedy's kind of dog shit now, a little bit. <laughs> it's sort of bad. There's a lot of smart people doing it. And uh, I'm like, it was never really for you, you know? <laughs> is for idiots. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these smart people, they say stuff like this. They go, they go, comedy should punch up instead of punching down. And I always think, what, what does that mean? Punch up, punch down. But um, well, so punching down, I think, is if the butt of your jokes is like a little person, you know? That's punching down. You shouldn't do that. Comedy should punch up the way a little person hits his wife, right? <laughs> His, his, his regular size wife. Or like a Great Dane, you know? That's what, that's what comedy should do. It should speak truth to power. The, the way a little person hits a Great Dane. But yeah. We didn't, we didn't have comedy for a little bit because that thing happened, you know, that thing that uh, we're all sick of talking about, hearing about. Um, but uh, yeah, the pandemic, it was okay. It was okay for me. Um, my, you know who, who had kind of a rough pandemic was my brother because my brother has autism. And uh, in the early days, he wouldn't wear a mask in public. So we would go out. I would worry people would think he was like a Trump supporter, you know? <laughs> and I had to be like, no, he's the other kind of retard. <laughs> Yeah. He's the good kind. Three card. He's like the... <laughs> fun kind of retard. I went to an Italian restaurant the other night, and I went to the bathroom, and I, uh, on the men's room it said Signori, and then the women's room said Donne. And then the handicapped bathroom said, if your legs are not work, you shit in here. <laughs> we, have, we have a bigger restroom. More easy for you to shit. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then next to that, there was a sign that said, and also, if you were born a man, but you feel in your heart you were a woman. <laughs> You can't pee anywhere, okay? Please, please use the bathroom that goes with your gender identity. We do not care. Because, you know, some people are ignorant. They think that like a pedophile is going to put on a wig and go into the ladies' bathroom. But hey, what if uh, what if you were male pedophile and you attracted the little boys? <laughs> Nothing is stopping you. I was like, wow, that's such a good argument. That's very true. I'm gonna get the calamari. I 
I haven't had a very good calamari <laughs> in a while. Hello everybody, Mike Racine here. I hope you're enjoying the special. The presentation you're watching is self-funded, so if you feel compelled, there's my Venmo, my PayPal, my Zelle, and my Cash App if you want to send me five or ten bucks. Really appreciate it. Now back to the show. So we we did something we did something that a lot of people did during the pandemic. I uh, I got her pregnant and we had a baby. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Little uh, little COVID baby. There really wasn't much to do in lockdown besides make bread and bust in your wife. Um, and uh, one day I was all out of sourdough starter. I said, let's have a little sexual intercourse. And uh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't plan the baby, so I think that'll be my first lesson with my son. Like, don't trust your mother. <laughs> don't trust your mother, don't give her your sperm, because she will change your life with it. But, uh, but yeah, but I got, to, uh, I got to watch somebody give birth two years ago. And I gotta say, maybe, maybe the hardest thing I ever did in my entire life <laughs> was watch somebody give birth. I don't know if I could imagine anything more difficult than, uh, than watching someone give birth. And um, I really don't know if I believe in God anymore after... <laughs> After seeing that. But yeah, I, I don't know if I believe in God anymore because I, I think the vagina is way too small. <laughs> that thing should be three times the size that it is. Because humans are the only animal, it seems like they have such a difficult time giving birth. You watch a nature documentary, that, that, you watch a buffalo give birth, that baby buffalo just slides right out of there. And he's like, yeah, what's going on? I'm a baby buffalo. <laughs> Hey, when's freaking lunch? <laughs> and then I'll tell you this, it's not fair that the woman does the whole baby. If, if there was a God, she would do most of the baby. And then I would squeeze a couple pieces out of my asshole. <laughs> and we would assemble the baby together, like an Ikea desk but she does the whole thing and you, you just stand there like an idiot the whole time. You don't even need to be there. And you want to help. You're like, does somebody want to step on my balls or something? I'm like, I just feel like, I should be doing more here. I'll tell you, one, one thing that helped a little bit, you know, I, I, was like, I was like, honey, I know this is really hard and I know it's taking a long time, but I bet it's taking so long because you have such a tight pussy. <laughs> Yeah, I think she appreciated that a lot. So, you know, a little tip for the fellas out there. Uh, if your wife's ever giving birth, you tell her she has a tight pussy. And then if you can, you want to slip the doctor $20. And uh, you go, hey, can you tell her this is the tightest pussy that you've ever seen? <laughs> in your entire medical career. <laughs> and, yeah, we had an Italian doctor and those people like, they love cash, you know, so. <laughs> he was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Oh, what a tiny pussy. <laughs> Oh, it's so little. <laughs> and then he winked at me. <laughs> Our baby is uncircumcised. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. We were happy, we were happy about that one too. But uh, you get a lot of pushback from family when you don't circumcise. I didn't realize. Like when, when you say you're not circumcising your kid, your mom and all your aunts come out of the woodwork and they go, I would never put one of those in my mouth. And you go, all right, you don't have to. You don't have to go on a Tinder date with your grandson. 
And then my sister was kind of weird. My sister was like, well, you should circumcise him because gir girls, we all know who's uncircumcised and we make fun of them. And I was like, okay, well, that's good to know. You and your whore friends are all just like... <laughs> laughing at the Polish kid in your class. <laughs> um, and then the weirdest one, my wife's aunt was like, well, what are you going to do when he asks you why his penis is different from yours? And I was, I was like, I think I'm going to not show him my penis, maybe. <laughs> but he might see it by accident, and um, if he does, I'll just tell him the truth. You know, I'm gonna be like, well, our penises are different because your grandparents cut a piece of mine off because I did not eat my vegetables. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, this is what happens when you talk back to your mother, buddy. We call, we call the rabbi and we say, we circumcise you. But yeah, I gotta, I gotta get in shape now though, you know, cause I, I'm a parent and uh, I feel like if I'm not careful, um, cause I'm, I'm starting to look like every dead father from a social media post, <laughs> right? <laughs> when, people, when people post about their dead dad, this is what it looks like. <laughs> when they're like, RIP dad, I, I can't believe you ate your last chili cheese dog five years ago. <laughs> You really loved uh, carrying a knife and getting in fights at the CVS self-checkout. <laughs> no, I don't know. I feel good. I gotta get in shape, though, because uh, I think the worst thing would be if you, if you die and then you, uh, you go to heaven and you have to watch your kid turn into a loser because you can't be there for him. Like, imagine going to heaven, you gotta watch your kid do improv, right? <laughs> that would suck. He's just like, my name is Alexander Hamilton, and I'm here to say, <laughs> revolution is the only way. And you're like, stop, no, fucking don't do that. Just get, get CTE with the cool kids. Join the marching band where they finger each other. I also, uh, I gotta worry about my wife passing away too. That would be very bad if she passed away, cause uh, I could not afford our apartment on my own. <laughs> and what do you do? I guess you get a roommate, but it couldn't be any roommate. I'm 35 years old, so it would have to be like another single mom roommate. Um, and then I bet she would have a bunch of single mom friends and uh, they'd all come over and they'd feel bad for me because I have a dead wife. Um, and they don't want to like suck me off, you know? <laughs> my, my wife's like a really good person, so we, I bet we'd raise a lot of money for her funeral from GoFundMe. <laughs> so I would just have like a big pile of money and um, uh, a bunch of women who want to suck me off. <laughs> so that would be very bad. And then you gotta worry about uh, school shooters, you know? That's a big thing that happens a lot. And uh, whenever there's a school shooting, I think it's funny, there's always that conversation about should we arm the teachers? And uh, I always think if we arm the teachers, do we have to arm the subs as well? Because <laughs> have you guys ever met a substitute teacher? Like, I, You want them having guns? I don't, I don't know. We had a sub in middle school, his name was Mr. Novick, and uh, we called him Mr. No Dick. <laughs> I'm just like, you want that guy having a gun? Like, he, he didn't even have a penis. <laughs> he was just some no penis having loser <laughs> named Mr. No Dick, who lived with his mother. We knew we lived with his mother because we followed him home one day after school. <laughs> we, said, we said, Mr. No Dick lives with his mother. <laughs> All right, fine, fine, <laughs> fine. Um, the last thing you gotta worry about when you have a kid is uh, pedophiles, you know? And uh, they're, they're out there. <laughs> and uh, so I'm around kids a lot more and uh, you forget that there's boundaries with kids sometimes. Like um, I was at a highway rest stop recently and this little girl was playing with the gumball machine and I was like, oh, I bet she wants a gumball. And I have all these quarters in my pocket. I should give her a quarter 
so she can get a gumball. But then I was like, what am I, nuts? Like, you can't do that. <laughs> you, you cannot give a hot little girl a quarter for the gumball machine. <laughs> no matter. No matter how hot she is, it's just not, <laughs> not right. But then it, it's weird, because kids don't always know about the boundaries either. Like, kids love to come up to you and be like, hey, let's play Tickle Monster. And you gotta be like, hey, I will never fucking touch you. Do you understand me? <laughs> actually, actually, get away from me right now. <laughs> actually, I'm gonna call the cops on you if you, <laughs> if you look at me again. But, uh, but I, I do know that I'm not a pedophile. Right? Thank you. And, um, yeah, I'm not, and that's, that's a great, that's a really good day in your life when you, when you realize that. When you realize that you don't want to have sex with children, you're like, I knew it, you know? Like, I'm, I'm awesome. <laughs> um, um, I hope you've all experienced it if you haven't, if you haven't already. Because because uh, sometimes you, you, you sometimes you will see kind of kind of like just an objectively hot kid, <laughs> and you don't get turned on, and you're like, if that one doesn't give me an erection, then none of them will. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like I, I was at the beach a few years ago. I was at the beach and this little this little ten year old boy ran by and I mean I gotta say this he was he was pretty overweight and he had just maybe the nicest tits I've ever seen <laughs> in my life <laughs> like on anybody you know and then, he just he just had these perky little a cups that were kind of <laughs> bouncing up and down and like glistening in the sun and I was like not turned on. <laughs> But if I wanted to, it would be that one, for sure. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> it's, like, it's like when you go to a farm and you see a, like a really sexy horse, you know? <laughs> you ever see a horse with a big fat ass? <laughs> and you go, wow, somebody wants to fuck the shit out of that horse. But not me, baby. Not me, I'm normal. Thank you, thank you. That's the show. Thank you very much. We got a little, we got a little special guest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can you wave? Can you wave? Okay. Thanks, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.